Regardless of how you are, what time, regardless of what time of day you're watching this video, welcome to worship today at Lakeview Lutheran Church. It is good to have you join us, and as I always say, you're most welcome to share um, this video via Facebook or, or email, however you would prefer, if you know of people who would appreciate being a part of this worship service. I simply want to thank Terry Warnke for videotaping today, Lynn for her um, her work on our new grand piano, um, Laura Yashichik for playing uh, flute, and Spencer, Aiden, and Annette Ponell for singing this morning. And in a moment, you'll hear from the president of the congregation, Greg Steinhauer, and I'm grateful that he was able to stop by as well. So thank you, Lakeview Congregation, for your continued financial support for the mission and ministry of this place. We also greatly appreciate that. And at this time, I will invite our council president, Greg, over to the um, music stand. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, folks. It's certainly wonderful for me to be here today among all of these very talented people. I'm so proud of the services that Lakeview has prepared over these past weeks, and I share web links with others every time I get that chance. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm totally fed up with this virus thing. I want my life back. Quite frankly, I'm sick of the word COVID-19. And every commercial on television or the radio makes note of it. Heck, we can't even hold our new grandbaby because of it, which is a huge deal. Or is it? Then I get to thinking, I'm okay. Our income is not really affected by this thing. And up to this point, it only seems to be a major inconvenience. I look around and see people who really have lost their jobs their mental health, their livelihoods, and worse yet, their loved ones. This selfish thought makes me feel terrible because it really is a big deal. The simple message here is that no matter how deep this disease has cut into your life, by faith, the grace of God will carry you all through it. When things get tough at our house, there's a saying we often use and it goes like this. After every Good Friday, there's an Easter. You may have heard that before, too. It's a powerful message, folks, and surely something to hold on to. I wish you all a good day and a great week ahead. And remember, stay at home, wash your hands, and no kissing. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate you stopping by today. I'm going to invite you now to silence all of your electronics um, in your house. Uh, make sure your kids are quiet, the dogs are not barking, all those kinds of things. And we will prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's Prelude on the New Grand Piano.
You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. In order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Jesus is risen. And the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of the cosmos, giver of light, keep our hearts calm and our patience intact. You gave us the gift of the Christ who promises us a place with you in that final time. Keep us focused on that good news. Keep us faithful in this promise. Keep us diligent in our serving. In the name of the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, amen. lesson comes from St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you, where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father, who dwells in me, does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. 
But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. In my name, if you ask me anything, I will do it. This Gospel lesson always reminds me of a little story that I'm pretty sure I've probably shared before, given as long as I've preached from this pulpit. A Presbyterian died and was standing in line to get into heaven. St. Peter welcomed her and then said to her that she should proceed to room 267. St. Peter also told her to be very, very quiet as she passed room 210. Next in line was a Jewish rabbi. St. Peter welcomed him and sent him on his way to room 235. He also told the rabbi to be very quiet as he passed room 210. Next in line was an evangelical evangelist. St. Peter sent him to room 216 and again told him to be very quiet as he passed room 210. Now the next person in line was a Catholic nun. And she asked St. Peter why he was telling everybody to be so quiet as they passed room number 210. Peter, St. Peter told her, that's where the Lutherans are, and they think they're the only ones here. It's kind of a funny story. At the same time, it's filled with some truths. How many of us in our lifetimes have sometime been led to believe that only certain people will be able to enjoy eternity? How many times have, have we been led to believe that Christians might be the only ones who will know of God's salvation? And therefore, it's our job to convert Jews and Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists and agnostics and everybody else. How often have we heard today's gospel text from St. John interpreted in a way that suggests that only people who know Jesus can be part of God's salvation? It's my belief that anyone who thinks that they can determine who gets into heaven and who doesn't get into heaven is simply playing God. And we have been repeatedly told in those scriptures that playing God is not our job. It's not what we've been called to do. The author of John helps us to see that Jesus is the way to God for all who are willing to listen. But as people, and we are people, who truly claim to have faith in God, then we should leave the faith and the fate of others up to God. If we believe that God is as powerful as we claim God is, then we can freely and comfortably believe that God is able to provide other avenues up to eternity if God wants to do that. We are not to be the judge. We are not to be the decision makers. So the words of today's gospel are often used at funeral services. Over my time as a pastor, I've used them many times, sometimes at the requests of families, sometimes because I just feel it's a good reading. It's a popular choice of scripture for that particular occasion because the words in that text provide assurance that the one who has died in Christ can now take up residence in a heavenly home. Jesus says that he will prepare a place for each one of us. Now in all the translations of the Bible, like the old King James Version, it actually says that in God's house there are many rooms. It's kind of a weird thing. I find it ironic that Jesus is going to prepare many rooms for all of us, in contrast to the lack of a room that night when he was born in Bethlehem. So as the text continues, we can see that our place is not in an isolated private room or in a room with only our faith denomination, like that story that I started this sermon with. We learn in that text that our final destination is not necessarily in a giant heavenly mansion, a physical place. Jesus' words 
are less about a place than a relationship. Our relationship with Jesus and our relationship, therefore, with God, our Creator. His words tell us that in Jesus we know all that we need to know about God. And just as we can have a relationship with another human being, we can also have a relationship with God. And Jesus tells us that one day, someday, that relationship with God will be as real and will be as obvious as our relationships are with one another. The hope of one day being with Christ fully and forever is as real as the works that we are called to do in his name, in Jesus' name, right now. So this gospel lesson guides us to understand that the pain and the distress of this mortal life of our world today can't last forever. We can live in hope, hope for something else. Jesus helps us to see that the present will eventually give way to the future. He helps us to see that his destiny of resurrection can be our destiny as well. And while we wait for that, we can do Jesus' works just as he does God's work. I don't know what better advice I can give you during this unprecedented time in our world. And I'm not going to say COVID-19 because our president's sick of hearing that word. I can't think of better advice that I can give you than the advice of Jesus today. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. Amen. The hymn is, I am the bread of life. The words will appear on your screen.
Today we confess our faith using the traditional words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Abundant God, thank you for loving us and for the gift of the Christ. We give thanks for the gift of Easter and the promise of eternal life in your kingdom. Continue to watch over your church, keeping it honest and faithful. We pray for all church leaders during this unusual time. We lift to you the staff and the council here at Lakeview. Be with the world. Give the nation's courage and strength to work together to reduce coronavirus deaths. Continue to guide researchers to find treatments and ways to prevent this disease. Bring peace to those who struggle with the economy and who have had to face layoffs. Give us the ability to continue to provide our food pantry. We pray for the world's food supply and for all those who work in the food industry. As states and nations return to some level of normalcy, make all people wise to use safety precautions and to be considerate of others. Watch over our children who are experiencing unusual school programs. Keep teachers innovative. Touch with comfort all who grieve today and move your healing hands over those who are ill, including Georgia and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. And we pause for a moment today to remember all those who have died in this nation and throughout the world because of the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Together we pray the traditional Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The hymn is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. The words to the first four verses will appear on your screen.
receive the blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you now and forever. Amen. Risen Jesus is the bread of life. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Our concluding music today is a vo vocal flute duet. I trust in thee, Lord Jesus. Annette Pownell will sing. Laura Yashichek will play the flute. And Lynn Najem will accompany on the piano.